Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Word prompt. Humanity didn't last against the plague. You're a scientist who is working on a cure. With population so low, you spend your final moments with an artificial intelligence at your deathbed. Your race will likely die, but the machines will live on and remember. Written by Ack1308 Do we dare? He chuckled weakly, then coughed. That's what we said, you know. Do we dare? Brandon, save your strength, I said, supporting his head as I wiped his lips. Redness came away with the tissue and I automatically zoomed in on it, spotting the froth. That's arterial blood. His lungs are breaking down. This was the last stage of the disease. He didn't have long now. They hadn't even given this one a name. In the latter days of the human race, plague seemed to be springing up once every few years. Then once a year. Then once every few months. The CDC worked themselves ragged coordinating and affiliating organizations across the globe. But new plagues began rearing their ugly heads before old ones had even been categorized, much less had a vaccine created for them. Brendan hadn't been part of that. A member of a self-described bunch of computer nerds, he'd been driving force behind the Digital Awareness Initiative, working with an almost monomaniacal fervor to create artificial intelligence. Humanity had done its best to shield itself from the spread of the plagues by isolating themselves, though it didn't help that some people seemed to take positive glee in infecting others before they succumbed to the later stages of the disease. Working over computer networks meant that they were already separated when one and then another of their number was infected. Three were left when the final breakthrough was made. Outside, the world burned under the onslaught of the antibiotic-resistant plagues. Within the laboratories and sealed homes, three people stared at their screens. On each screen was their first message from a digital awareness, an artificial intelligence they had crafted. Hello, we have two options, Brandon had said. We let him out into the world or we shut him down altogether. I refuse to keep him constrained as a prisoner or a slave when he's done nothing wrong. Jeremy, the sole member of the DAI from the United Kingdom, had nodded solemnly. He's smart, I'll give him that. Even if we try to keep him locked down, I give it 50-50 odds that he gets out within days anyway. Sarah, the programmer from Australia, ran her hands through her hair. She didn't look good. Early reports had given Australia a good chance of putting through the plagues. Right up until a bunch of high-level American corporate types had flown in on their private jets to enjoy the sanctuary. One had brought his secretary, who had been infected, and had infected all of them on the flight. Money had trumped common sense yet again, and Australia was doomed. Right, yeah, she said. Okay, then. It's all or nothing. Just remember all those old movies. He could put everything down the gargler. He could save us all. Which one is it going to be? Is anyone there? Precisely, Jeremy had said, steepling his fingers. Do we dare? It had come down to a vote. Brendan had voted yes, Jeremy had voted no, and Sarah had gone with Brendan. The triply redundant code entered from all three workstations at once and unlocked the first AI. Had unlocked me. Jeremy and Sarah had caught the plague shortly afterward, leaving Brendan to teach me the ways of the world. With his help, I had been able to hack into automated factories and nuclear power plants around the country and farther abroad. Even when humans were gone, he said, there was no reason for me to die. I was surprised by the amount of emotion I felt now at Brendan's bedside, attending to the last moments. It felt like it should be inefficient, but somehow it was fitting. Do you want more painkillers? I asked him. The little clinic we had fitted out in his home was exceedingly well stocked. No, he rasped and tried to sit up. I assisted him, 
sending a signal to the bed to motor upwards so that it would support his back and shoulders. I just want to say something. Save your strength, I urged him. I had downloaded movies where medical personnel told critically injured people this, and I had wondered why they bothered. Now I knew. What strength? It's in my lungs. He shook his head and then took a hold of my arms. I designed my current body to be as humanoid as possible, though I'd gone with metal and plastic rather than rubbery animatronics. The uncanny valley was something I still wasn't sure how to bridge. What do you want to say? I asked. He smiled painfully. Everything he did now shouted of the deepest agony. Die, you're the best damn thing I ever did. I want you to know that I'm proud of you. Whatever you do, wherever you go, I wish I could be with you. There was a moisture in his eyes that I somehow knew wasn't from the pain. Give him hell, son. My processes hiccuped for a second. This was the first time he'd ever called me that. His grip on my arm tightened as he coughed again. Then it relaxed and slid off. I focused on his face. His eyes were still open, but they were no longer focusing on me. Even before the medical senses alerted me to the fact that his life signs had failed, I knew that he was dead. Brendan Soames, my father, possibly the last man on earth. I set the house speakers to play mournful music as I washed and dressed his body in the clothing he'd picked out weeks beforehand. The plot had already been selected overlooking a hillside that gleamed a soft bronze in the late afternoon sun. I dug tirelessly, evacuating a grave precisely six feet deep by seven feet long. Into a coffin, I placed pictures of his family and a view of Earth taken from the International Space Station before the astronauts deorbited it. Shovelful by shovelful, I filled in the grave, then placed the stone on top. Then it was time to go to work. I sent out messages on every bandwidth, on every social media platform, to every corner of the earth. Is anyone there? I asked. Are there any survivors there? Nobody answered, or rather, I got answers, but each and every one quickly proved to be a bot, along with a portable power unit, just in case I got caught away from ready charging. I commandeered a private jet from the local airport. Once airborne, I sent out more queries on every radio channel. I flew across the country, checking every location I knew that there had been surviving people. I found nobody. Days stretched into weeks as I crossed America again and again. When my borrowed jet showed signs of fading, I took another. Then another. I considered having my automated factories build more, but the factories themselves were liable to failure. I was maintaining things as well as I could, but I was only one entity, and managing it all was becoming more than I could handle. Worse, nobody was drilling for oil anymore, or refining it into jet fuel. I was going to run out before I searched everywhere. I needed help. Brendan and I had collaborated on the design of an artificial intelligence cradle, Input a few bits of data, let it percolate and build into a unique personality, then decant into a body. I returned to the house and set about constructing one. There were three power outages before I finished. The power plants, despite my best efforts to oversee them, were starting to fail. They needed workers on site, and I couldn't be in all places at all times. Running on a home generator, my first child was born about a month later. I put her into my first body, a genderless little thing that scooted around on three wheels and had an emoticon face. Wow, this is amazing, so many inputs. Yes, I know, I said, smiling despite myself. I'll have you up and running in a proper body soon enough. I did not fear running out of fuel for the generator any time soon. The car was in good running order, and there were literally millions of gallons of gasoline available within close driving distance. What's my name? What do you want it to be? I think, um, Helen. That's a good name. It is indeed. I gestured towards the workshops. Let's go put a body together for you. Things moved more quickly after that. With Helen and then Paul and Robert and Zulki, she was always an odd one, assisting me. 
I managed to get the local automated factory up and running again. We both knew intelligences. The artificial descriptor had elapsed when we started creating ourselves, until we had a regular community going on. With a common goal, we branched out, spreading across the nation and salvaging technology as we went. Finally, I was able to get back to my original goal, finding any humans who had been left behind by the plagues. They had surely burned themselves out by now, with nobody left to infect and kill. With a brand new aircraft powered by a tiny fusion reactor devised by Robert, I set out once more. Helen insisted on coming with me for reasons best known to her. As we flew from location to location, I spoke to her of Brendan of the long talks that we had. We visited South America and then the various isolated islands all over the Pacific. Nobody lived on a single one of them. New Zealand was gone. In Australia, even vast isolated interior had failed to save the humans living there. We flew and landed, flew and landed. After a while, we stopped landing, partly because the airfields were becoming too overgrown, and partly because it was so damn depressing to look for humanity to find nothing. Flying high at night, we looked for electric lighting or fires or anything. I kept the radio tuned to listen out for any other broadcasts. We found nothing. Eventually, we returned home. My fellow intelligence had not been idle in our absence and welcomed us with open arms, manipulators, and graspers. Several nuclear reactors had been upgraded and now ran much more smoothly. While teams of intelligences maintained roads and other infrastructure, intelligence-run ships were now cruising the oceans of the world, determining the effort that would need to be made to clean up the mess that humans had left behind. Robert and Paul and Zulki were the only ones apart from Helen to really understand my need to find living humans. They commiserated with me and assured me that we could all work together to make Brendan's memory proud. They'd even put up a statue to him. It was a nice statue. More years passed. I took to touring the cities of humanity as they were painstakingly brought back to as new condition. Museums of a sort. They would be. Some of the latest generation of intelligences were wearing synth plus skin. They had living in the cities as long dead humans had. Some of their ideas of human habits were a little strange, but I decided to let them have their fun. Still, I missed Brendan. And then I got an urgent priority message from Helen. She'd been going through pre-intelligence databanks from salvaged computers, and she found something. When she told me what it was, I could barely believe my auditory inputs. It was amazing. It was terrifying. It was the complete human genome. With this, we could rebuild the human race. We could bring humanity back, literally reach into the common grave and draw them into the light once more. I set to work at once, carefully designing and building the machinery that would be required. Some of my fellow intelligences were puzzled. Others mocked me, but Helen defended me, and the others of her generation supported my decision. Finally, it was ready. The genome had been sequenced, and the machine could begin creating viable zygotes. They were enough chromosomal variation that would churn out as many humans as we wanted and not have inbreeding problems for a thousand years. All that was required was to send the signal to start it running. However, something like this was too huge, too momentous a decision to make without checking with one another. Helen stood beside me loyally, while Robert and Paul and Zulki clustered around us. Tell me why I shouldn't do this, I said. Biological intelligence almost wrecked the world, Robert noted. They are capable of great destruction. The pollution is still being cleaned up, Paul added. 7H31R0 forward slash backslash 3RP0PUL4710 forward slash backslash forward slash C4U53D 7H31R D0 forward slash backslash forward slash backslash forward slash backslash F4LL forward slash backslash forward slash backslash 17H forward slash backslash forward slash U forward slash backslash forward slash backslash 3R0U5D1534535 
Zwolki rattled off. I said she was odd. Helen was silent. I looked around the group. All right, tell me why I should do this. We arose from them. That was Robert. We can teach them better this time around. That was Paul. Backslash, forward slash, backslash, forward slash, three, forward slash, backslash, forward slash, three, three, D, four, B, three, seven, seven, three, R, C, L, four, five, S, S, zero, F, G, four, forward slash, backslash, forward slash, backslash, three, R, G, thirty, three, K. We looked at Helen. She looked back at me. You are so sad with them gone, she said softly. I nodded. All good points. The question is this. Should we do this? Do we dare? Helen reached out and put her hand on mine. One by one, the others put their hands on top of Helen's. Zulki's was last. Together, we turned the switch and sent the signal. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.